When people hear bubonic plague, they think of the Black Death. Medieval rats carrying medieval fleas carrying a medieval pathogen, combated by doctors in terrifying bird costumes. What most normal people don't realize is that the plague bacterium is still around and can actually be found in the United States, right here in our backyards. Well, not in my backyard. I live in New York City, so I can't actually afford to have a backyard, but if I did, there wouldn't be any plague in it. In fact, there's no plague in the eastern half of the United States. In this video, I wanna answer the question, why is there plague out west in states like New Mexico, California, and Washington? And why is it that America east of the Rockies is plague-free? Along the way, I also wanna tell you about my cross-country trip where I traveled to the southwest in order to meet some adorable little plague hosts. Who's the cutest little plague host? You are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. <clears throat> Plague is caused by a bacterium, Yersinia pestis, and it can cause a disease that shows up in a few different forms. People often think that the full name of plague is bubonic plague, but that just refers to one form of the disease where it causes your lymph nodes to swell into what are called bubose. Plague is typically a disease of rodents, like this one I found in my frying pan, as well as the fleas that they carry. Epidemics happen when it starts spreading from person to person as pneumonic plague, which is what killed like a third of all Europeans back in the 14th century during the Black Death. And plague is still a thing almost seven centuries later. We have antibiotics that reduce your chance of dying down to like one in 10, but small outbreaks still occur in places like Madagascar, where I work as a scientist and actually where I'm heading in like two days. I really need to pack. Here in New York City, we've never had an outbreak of the plague, but we have had two near misses. The first was in 1900 when they found rats with the plague in ships in the New York Harbor, but they didn't get ashore, it seems. I wanna tell you about the second time when we New Yorkers narrowly missed having plague in New York City. I'm not a historian, nor am I an historian, but nonetheless, the good folks at the National Archives downtown let me see the records of the New York quarantine station of the Public Health Service. I spent the better part of a day reading through the records they have, so I can now tell you the story of how New York narrowly missed getting the plague. For decades, starting in 1921, New York City was protected from plague by inspectors from the U.S. Public Health Service, who boarded ships and searched for signs of rats. If there was an excessive infestation, they used hydrogen cyanide to kill the rats. The medical director of the New York quarantine station, Dr. Robert Olson, noted that the gas had a pleasant peach blossom smell and is one of the most lethal of poisons. He also noted that they started doing a round of tear gas before the cyanide, because in the first couple months of fumigation, they'd accidentally killed a bunch of human stowaways. The fleas and livers and spleens of any rats that they found were pureed and then injected into guinea pigs. Since guinea pigs are so extremely susceptible, if the pig died, they knew that plague was present. For 22 years, they did this work and the tests always came back negative. That is, until one day in the middle of World War II. So I did my civic duty. Got my sticker. But since I was in the neighborhood, I decided to pop over here at Pier 84. This pier represents the location where New York City came closest to having an outbreak of plague. This is the USS Intrepid behind me. But back in the day, a ship called the Wyoming came in from Casablanca, a place where there was a plague outbreak going on. It docked over in Brooklyn. <laughs> I gave up and came back inside. As I was saying, in January 1943, a French freighter named the Wyoming arrived from Casablanca in Morocco. Casablanca was on the list of ports for ships needing extra special attention since they had a, a plague outbreak, which was a common occurrence in North Africa. But the Wyoming had a certificate saying she'd recently been fumigated and the public health service was really short staffed. So they let her dock uh, without doing an inspection. The ship was allowed to dock at Pier 34 in Brooklyn and then right here at Pier 84 in Manhattan. Some longshoremen, longshoremen? Some longshoremen spotted some rats, so they fumigated and killed 20 of them. Here in the modern day, I didn't see any rats, but I did see a bunch of rat traps. I also saw a park worker who saw someone else's Buffalo Bills jersey and got so excited that he crashed his car. Go Bills! Go Bills! Go Bills! <laughs> okay, back to 1943. Here is the report that I found from the National Archives detailing what happened next. It reads, Guinea pig inoculated January 1st, 1943 from a pool of 12 fleas, recovered from rats killed by fumigation of the French steamship Wyoming, resulted in the direct recovery of a pure culture of Pastorella pestis, which is the old name for the plague bacterium. 
That short message conveys massive news. The guinea pig inoculated with the samples died, meaning plague was present in New York City for the first time in 43 years. By that point, the ship had gone off to Staten Island for repair, so they refumigated and killed a dozen more rats. But they were rightfully terrified that rats with plague bacteria had gotten ashore. They didn't want to cause a panic, so they secretly began a massive rat trapping effort across the three boroughs. Thankfully, no evidence of plague was found in New York City. The city had gotten extremely, extremely lucky. The Wyoming was not so lucky. Two days after leaving Staten Island, she was torpedoed and sunk by a German submarine. While New York City avoided the plague like the, the plague, the West was not so lucky. Seafaring rats brought plague-infected fleas into the United States starting in 1900, mostly from infected areas in Asia. Port cities like Seattle and Los Angeles had frequent outbreaks, with the last one occurring about a century ago in LA. The plague bacterium spread from urban rats to rural rodents, and is now present at, at low levels in many rural areas out west. The plague-ridden rodents I wanted to see in the wild were prairie dogs. I don't know why, I just had this compulsion. So I pulled the sunscreen down and squinted and, and put the throttle to the floor and kept on moving west, into plague territory and in search of prairie dogs. I found them next to a dollar store parking lot in Gallup, New Mexico. The good people of New Mexico were too polite to comment, but the zoom lens and, and tripod pointed at a run-of-the-mill rodent was a little bit weird. But I was too excited to care. They were everything I'd dreamed of. The next day, craving more prairie dogs, I visited a place called Prairie Dog Town in a local park in Lubbock, Texas. The park was started in 1935 by a guy named Kennedy N. Clapp, who created the Prairie Dog tourist attraction as the dogs were in decline due to government-sponsored poisoning. You can look at them while I talk about plague disease ecology. Prairie dogs have a bad reputation when it comes to zoonotic diseases, those that are passed from non-human animals to, to humans. Besides the plague, they can carry tularemia, which is another potentially fatal bacterial infection, and monkeypox. But at least for the prairie dogs I saw, they really don't deserve the blame for plague, it turns out. People just associate prairie dogs and plague because we've observed them dying of the disease in big numbers. In black-tailed prairie dogs, like these ones, plague usually isn't present, and when it does show up, it causes the quick death of 95 to 100% of dogs. They essentially die too quickly to spread the disease to humans. This situation of flare-ups in animals causing rapid die-offs is what's called epizootic, and in these cases, the pathogen is unlikely to persist and spread to people. Even though tons of scientists have searched, they've never been able to find a single obvious widespread reservoir host species that has enzootic or, or sustained low-level transmission of plague out west. It seems now that maybe a multitude of species might have plague at, at very low levels, including white-tailed prairie dogs, which are found out in California. The most important plague-transmitting species is probably deer mice, Paramiscus maniculatus, who are also very adorable and very good at vectoring diseases. A study that used computational methods to determine what factors predict the range of plague ranked deer mice range as most important. However, we have the deer mice here in the east, but we don't have plague, so it can't just be the mice. A recent study using similar methods found that soil salinity and aridity were actually the most important factors for determining where plague is, so maybe the eastern U.S. is just too wet and too unsalty to sustain plague for some reason. So yeah, that's my best guess as to why the western U.S. has plague, while the eastern U.S., and specifically New York, does not. It's a combination of ecology and, and dumb luck, but also the sacrifices of a lot of public health inspectors and guinea pigs. In some ways, it's weird we know so little, but disease ecology is, is often complicated like that. Figuring out why plague is in some places and not others will get all the more critical if the bacterium figures out a way to thwart our antibiotics. Until then, in the United States, it's really only a threat if you're, say, a prairie dog. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe if you want more disease and evolution-focused videos. I have one on bird flu, one on a New York City rat disease, one on eastern equine encephalitis, which does actually kill people here in the eastern U.S., and there's much more planned for this year, including in Madagascar, which I need to pack for right now. Thanks very much to the National Archives and to Rafael Orlov, who's a journalist who wrote about the New York City plague uh, case for a car magazine, uh, strangely enough, um, which tipped me off to the entire tale. Okay, I have to go to Madagascar now. I haven't been able to find a single obvious widespread wet reservoir. I feel like I look like a priest. Who's just the cutest little plague host? You are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are.